this was the last time. Oh, I remember this one. Yeah, the longest game in the World Cup. Maybe you remember it too. Uh, interesting game. Let's see if we can uh, look at this together very, very quickly. Uh, let me just get my settings right. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, anyone, could you tell me what did Black... Uh... Oh, we, we played the move already, I think. Yeah, I, I can't quiz you anymore. They played Rookie 7 already. And we talked about the fact that Black wanted to be wrong tonight. That's what we did last time. I can't really quiz you on this one. Uh, yeah, exactly. I hope uh, everything is okay. I'll mute somebody. Uh, connection? It's okay. Or what? Or some problem with the connection? Else let me know. If uh, there is a problem with connection, I have two, one, two bar of connection. I don't know what that means. Is that a bad connection? I can read. Uh, bad network quality. Yeah, you're right. Actually, it's 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 pretty bad. Don't know what that, why that happened. Now I guess it it got better, right or no? Or is it still bad? What do you say? Medium network. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's tricky. This. Uh, same. Yeah. Um, oh, video is super slow. Yeah. What what might that be? Um, wow. Let me. <coughs> sorry. Let me check something then. Very quickly, or I can I can maybe bring up some examples and then I will try to fix it. Some some hardware thing here. Um, one bar now. Yeah, why does that happen? Wow, that's really strange. Um, wow, give me just one moment. Uh, let's see if I can find this. Uh, let's see if I can get this right. I think there is some set somewhere where I can uh, fix this. Let's see. Uh, yeah, hold on, just one one moment. I'll try to fix this. Uh, all right, let's see if this. Yeah, all right. I'll re um, uh, I'll reload the page and. Buddy, what if black plays? What if light plays night eight? Was that the question? Um, there was a question by, I think, uh, um, Titan Chess. Knight, knight G8. We talked about that also. Another interesting time to bring the knight in that way. Aha, but maybe white can fight against it with G4. We can conclude that this was the best plan for, for black. Aha, probably. Yeah, most flexible way to, to bring the knight to the action. It's also taking care of other squares. Yeah, that was the last time. So let's get going. We will continue today with more examples of thinking in both directions, right? King. I see Sathak. Yeah, interesting joke. Yeah, don't put the knight on h7. Probably less, le less flexible in this way. Uh -huh. Thinking in both directions. Here we go. Uh, let's take another example. I won't tell you, of course, if it's... Uh, tactics or strategy you'll have to find out yourself so here we go you get the black pieces here okay uh, let me quiz you on this one let's see who's the fastest one here to see this uh, best continuation with the black pieces all right you you guys are very clever so you get just one minute Yeah, I understand Titan and Rohan and RKDK. That's what I thought also. But it's actually not the best choice. Santos, same goes for you. That's very intuitive. Uh, but I can defend her. I have 92, right? Wow, everybody's falling in the same trap. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yeah, why at one? Congratulations. We have a first winner here. Um, so what can I tell you about this? Um, can, uh, we can't rely on intuition. Uh, or pattern recognition uh, on every occasion, right? That's obvious, of course, but I'll, I'll tell you that anyway. So I'm sorry, guys. We have a big group of students who went the wrong path. It's very, very evident, but you have not missed something here. Uh-huh. Um, anyone else is close? Connor, interesting idea by Connor. I guess I go knight e2, Connor. So... Only Wyatt wrong. Yeah, only Wyatt. Congratulations. Everybody did made the same mistake. 
I can first tell you about the about the mistake. Okay, I can first tell you about the mistake. Or maybe I should ask Wyatt instead. Wyatt, you who got it right. I'll give you the white pieces and I'll give you the black pieces. So uh, please go ahead, Wyatt. How do you continue here with the black pieces? The first move is simple, right? Yeah. Knight h5, hitting the queen, hitting the pawn. Yeah, white needs to protect both of them. <coughs> Sorry, I'll play queen e3 so I keep the bishop protected. Now comes uh, Wyatt's move. Knight b6, that's the right move. Okay, Wyatt, this was the question for you. Why don't we play knight c5 then? That's my answer. Oh, juicy tactic with bishop d4. Uh, we have a fork on b3. Isn't this winning? Aha, knight b2. Nice, no? Nice. Yeah, you can try to convince me here that black is still better, but I'm not so sure. Um, black is, white is holding here. White is holding this position. You can play knight b3, you can try to take this pawn if you like. But I think I have compensation here still if you take this pawn. I don't know. Yeah, what should I play in this position? I have no idea. Maybe I should go uh, rook c1, just defend the pawn. And... I have some compensation here, I think. So... Um, or maybe there is something even better. Yeah, I can't see clearly. Maybe there is some smarter way of playing. Sometimes when the knight is far away from this square, you can play c5 also. I don't know if this makes this makes sense here. But okay, maybe then the knight could bounce back and so on. But this knight is a little shaky also. But uh, yeah, I think I'll stick to rook. It, it makes sense to bring all the pieces to the party and so on. So yeah, Wyatt is right. Uh, knight h5 and after queen e3, this is much smarter, knight e6. Because now... As you can see, uh, white can't save both pawns, right? I can, always, I can definitely not take uh, due to this tactic, and uh, I cannot save both pawns this time. So 92. Yeah, what happened then, Wyatt? Sorry. Of course. I mean, we're not just winning a pawn. We're also completely destroying white's uh, pawn structure. Right? Black is basically winning here. Interesting, no? Interesting uh, little tactic. Knight uh, b6. Not very intuitive, I would say, this move. Everybody, all of us, we really love this move, knight c5. Yeah, I don't know about the connection. Uh, I, not my mistake. I'm sorry, uh, Kind King Sam. I'm not a computer engineer. I don't know why the connection is bad today. Uh, I have no real idea about it. I can, I can close my videos at some point. Wow, very annoying. I have no idea, really. Would you like me to restart? I can, I can restart the computer. Um, yeah. Let me know if it's getting critical. I, I will uh, restart, but it, it maybe not only depend on me, right? It can depend on other other things also. Um, never mind. Yeah, we will continue. Uh, so let's let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, I don't know about the, the accessible classroom interface. By the way, this is also possible that. Some people have better connection, than, I mean, of the students, no? And others have worse connection. I've, I don't know. It's not my expertise field, really. So, uh, nice. Anyway, we can see here clearly the importance of looking at the option, options at the same time. Okay, let me show you something else. This game was played recently. Uh, very strong. Um, Grandmaster with white pieces, Korobov. Um, we had this position. I will you to find white's uh, best move here in this position and uh, if you can also tell me like something about the idea that you have in mind i would be very interested so here we go uh, white's uh, best uh, move and the underlying idea this game between korobo with white and mitcha with the uh, black pieces Interesting. Yeah, I, I like that move also. He didn't play that, but uh, makes a perfect sense. I guess I would have to play king um, king h7 in that case. Even if it looks a little shaky. Maybe I can bring my knight to g8. Okay, we have a winner here. Tiger Saki has found the right way of continuing here in this example. But very interesting uh, idea that uh, some of you are uh, proposing here. Yeah, I didn't see that move. Uh -huh. and the Korobov in the game, it seems. Uh -huh. Oh, I think there was something else uh, going on there. Interesting, interesting. I understand now why he didn't play that. Uh -huh. Very interesting. 
very very interesting okay time's up uh rook h3 is what most people were saying rook h3 hitting the pawn on h6 that's very interesting uh, i thought that maybe you could play king h7 but there is actually another very interesting approach here if you look at the fact that white has the bishop pair but there is some kind of potential stronghold for black on f5 black could actually play bishop takes e5 then take g4 and try to put the knight on f5 if you see what i mean if you take like yeah, I don't know how would you you would like to take like that, I guess, to go the, the diagonal. I could maybe take, and if you take on f8, I'll take back and I'll try to plug in a knight on f5. I don't think this is so bad for for black. Uh, you'll let me know if. Uh... Oh, yeah. I'll shut down the video then. Yeah, okay. Is it getting better now? I, I have no idea. It's not my my mistake with the uh, with the connection. I, I have no idea. Is it better? Okay. Yeah, I know how. Medium network. It says. It still says bad network on my side. Yeah, it's it's the same, right? I will I will restart then. I'll restart everything. All right. I'll I'll be back in a in a minute. I'll be back in a minute. Uh, I don't know. Today, but uh, I will I will try. Okay, uh, wait for me a little, and I'll I'll come back. All right, I think we're back. Uh, let me know about the uh, connection and all this. Um, better? Okay, I don't know. I, I don't know so much about programming and so on. So hopefully it's working this way. Uh, okay, thanks for your input.
let's uh, get back on track here. This very interesting game by Korobov, which actually made me think about Petrosyan's games when he was uh, yeah, a young player and so on a long time ago. So we were talking about Rook H3, right? We were talking about Rook H3 and I was saying that uh, maybe what Black could try to do here is some kind of revolution. Now try to change the properties of the position, try to break up the light squares and plant a knight on F5. <laughs> I think that's where we stopped, right? We went up to this position and we said that maybe Black has counterplay here, right? In this position. So what's your opinion, guys? Anyone would like to comment on this? Are you still convinced that uh, Rook H3 is the best move or uh, should we look at something else? Aha, Black has some counterplay, right. Okay, I think uh, Tiger Saki was the only one who got it right. So uh, if I can find Tiger somewhere here, uh, let's see, uh, where are we? Sorry, I'm a little slow here with finding the, the names of the players. Uh, let's see. Or, or should I requiz? Yeah, I think I should requiz in that instead so that everybody has a chance to, to find, okay? To find this. Uh, it's a very nice uh, plan by Grandmaster Korolov that he used in this game. Uh, I'll ask you for at least uh, five moves here. Should I do that? Yeah, okay, five moves. Go for it, guys. Uh, the only problem is that the moves are interchangeable. They are indeed interchangeable. So, Sarthak, you're basically on the right track. Yeah, half a point for Sarthak. A half a point for 200, maybe for 206. Uh, yeah, so I think you're starting to understand this. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We have a lot of people who got it right. Titan Chess, you played it uh, in a different way. I think your way of playing is also excellent. Aha, uh -huh. uh, very nice. Okay, nice. Tiger Sahi got the whole sequence. Yeah, that's great work. Uh, we're talking about files, open files, or you could say, you could say topic, potentially open files. Potentially uh, open files. What do I mean by that? Well, that you can open them at some point, right? You have the flexibility to open up those files, but maybe just not now. Yeah, I think it's okay, Chessort, your way of playing also. Uh, many people wanted to start with Queen G2. I think that's perfectly fine also. Uh, Korobov preferred a different uh, execution of this plan, but this looks very interesting as well. Basically, we're talking about the same plan here, trying to pile up on the G file, but not releasing the tension, right? So let's uh, look at what the Tiger Saki has to say about this. Please go ahead, Tiger, how to continue here. Why not Rook G3 and Queen G3? I think that works also. Honestly, I'm not completely sure. He started with this move. I guess somehow it's nice to have the pawn protected if black takes or something. Uh, in the game, black replied, I think, king h7. And now he decided that uh, before swinging over the queen, let's make one last uh, preparatory move. Um, h3 was played in the game so that we can actually also take back like that if we like. But that's not the only point with the move h3. The other point is that we can now bring in the other rook to the battle also. Aha. Exactly. I think these moves are perfectly interchangeable. If you want to play queen g2 here, it's perfectly fine. I think uh, somebody said, maybe it was Titan who said uh, h3 on move one. I think that, that is also fine. Yeah, perfectly fine. You can Time is not a big issue here in this position. That's perfectly fine also. So it's like a strategy exercise, right? Strategy exercise. But that's how the game went. Yeah, please go ahead, Tiger. What happened here? Yeah, black is totally stuck. Exactly. What a nightmare to play this with black. And please notice that he doesn't take on f5. He doesn't take now. He keeps that in the pocket. If he takes instead, yeah, in the first place, black could maybe take with the knight, right? And they still have, uh, yeah, they have a nice square for the knight now. But even here, if you look what happened in the game, yeah, tiger played rook g1 and I go knight e8. Even here, you can see that he didn't take. If he takes now, I can take back and I can fight back on the g file. So, of course, he didn't do that. Alakai's gun, exactly, exactly, Alakai's gun. Smart thinking, yeah, I, I think Alakai's gun, it should be like that, right? The queen should be behind the rook or something, but it, yeah, it doesn't matter. But now you can see that it's very nice now, it's very nice how we have piled up the pieces and it's difficult now for black to, to defend here. They played knight f6 in the game and now that white has all the pieces piled up, they said, 
now it's time to open up the game. Now they actually went to the to the action here. So G takes f5. You can see that if I take with a knight, thanks to having kept the tension here, I can just cash in. I can just take this pawn. All right. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Tiger. Yeah. Great work. Now let's have a look at after G takes f5. I will quiz you for White's beautiful finish of this game. Let's see who can fix or how we can actually win this game in, in beautiful style. All right, uh, you get one minute for this. Wow, knight f7, I can go rook takes f7, right? Please don't forget, guys, I have two knights protecting g8. Don't go knight f7 on move two. That's like a kamikaze attack. Uh, it ends in tragedy, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I didn't do my maths correctly, but seems to me that I'm defending now. If you give check on g6 instead, I think I'm brave enough to play king takes g7. Okay, Tiger Saki has found this very nice combination by the Ukrainian Grandmaster Korobov, fantastic player. He has really nice games. Definitely a player to follow to learn more about strategy and also about tactics like in, like in this case. Uh -huh. So who was close? Let's see. Oh, many people want to trade also. I see, I see. Take on g8. Yeah, if you take on g8, uh, I would take... Well, interesting. Yeah, let's, uh, let's check that. <clears throat> Most of you were saying here, rook t7, check, king h8, and rook takes g8. So let's see. Let's see if I can defend it in this position. I'll take with a the rook then. Uh, what did you want to play next? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm very happy to see Greg Shahadi here also. Uh, I think Greg also took on g8, but uh, I, I don't think not even Greg can uh, make this attack work, right? Or am I missing something? Knight f7, king h7. Uh, yeah, I had to play a move. Yeah, not clear what White is going to do here, no? Not, not completely clear how the attack is going. Uh, Knight f7, we cannot play that. That's what I was trying to say that. Uh, this is not working correctly because I have another knight protecting, right? And then some of you said knight g6, which is a very, very interesting move because if the queen could get there, it would be great. But maybe I could go here, king... Oh, I can't even hear the sound here. Wow, interesting. I should probably change my settings then. I'm, I'm fortunate not to hear anything. Uh, sorry, now I, I have my sound on. Yeah, so king takes. I think this is okay for black. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I'm still alive here, believe it or not. Or maybe I'm even better in this position with the knight coming to e4 and so on. Uh, yeah. So, what do you think, guys? What's what's going on here? How can we possibly win here? Give us more time. All right. You will quiz. Uh, we will quiz you from here then. All right. You will have more time. Yeah, I'm doing this very, very quickly. Okay. Uh, second and last chance. Okay. One minute for this mission. Take your time, guys. Korobov probably didn't do this in one minute. He had more time on the clock to find this. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, Al Morris, you, but you're very smart, I can say. You found it. So we have a winner here. Al Morris has found a way in which they continue the game. Rook g6, that's an interesting move. If you play rook g6, I guess I can probably take it, right? Knight takes g6. Add it says small goldfish. Not clear. Uh, that's really working. So I'll, I'll check with Al Morris. Please go ahead. I'll show us how should white continue here. Queen g3, subtle move. We're going to play queen h4. Then we're going to target this pawn. If in this imaginary variation they play rook to h7, we can take on f8. So a difficult situation for black in the game. They played bishop to xc5. That's the way we want to open up the game, of course. Black played knight g4, relying on this tactic. But look who got in the 
nicest tactic here. Queen takes d4, and that's, yeah, black went on to lose this game. Exactly. Aha, rook h7. Interesting, no, interesting. While you guys were thinking, I actually checked my files, and I found another example, which was, I think we had it here on USCS some time ago. I, I would like to refresh your memory, but maybe you were not around when we saw this one. But we had this one. We had this one. I, I can quiz you. If you want a little exercise, you can say it's fairly similar. No, it's fairly similar. How did Grandmaster Ernst uh, continue here in beautiful fashion? All right, you get only one minute. Yeah, nice to see you, Greg. Oh, you're in Spain. Okay, excellent. 1.30 in the morning. Aha. Uh -huh. Nice. Nice. I hope it's still uh, warm weather over there. Okay, L008, you have good memory or you have fantastic tactical vision because you saw what... Uh, Grandmaster saw also. Very nice. The same mating picture, right? Daniel, you also got it. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, Queen H3. Can you play that? Interesting, Queen H3. I'm not sure. Maybe Rook takes D3, no? Don't forget that I have Rook takes D3 in the pocket, maybe in some, some variation, or maybe not. Okay, a lot of people got it right. Greg also found it. Nice. Daniel, JM Chess, Titan, Almoris, John Sam, Kwoki, Kirotori, and some more people also found it. Very nice. Yeah, you quickly spot... Uh, the the motive here right Le legendary goat 206 all of you have found this very nice tactic which the dutch grandmaster also found in his game so please go ahead uh, titan chess show us how should white uh, continue here very nice little tactic we work on the open file um, in an unexpected way. It, it looks like the other one, right? And here comes the star move. Queen g4, very clever move, preparing to take on f5. And if f takes, obviously, it's uh, mate here. Yeah, exactly. So pretty mate, the same mate as we saw in the other case. I don't know if there is any other way to, to escape this, but it looks uh, tricky. Now it looks tricky to, to win in some other way. Some of you wanted to play, what was it? Uh, knight h4, for example, targeting the pawn here. I guess I should be ready to sack the exchange here with black. Um, yeah, this looks extremely painful. I don't know if I can take on... Can I take on d3, maybe? I think I can actually do this, right? Unless I'm, I'm blind. Uh, I think I'm defending everything, just like in the previous one. Yeah, I'm very fortunate that everything is defended here. Um, yeah, so it's basically the same as the last time. You see? Nothing new under the sun, they say. Nothing new under the sun. So nice that you saw this tactic, those of you who saw it. Take, take, check, and the beautiful move, queen g4. Very clever way of attacking. I think it's almost the only winning, uh, winning move here. All right, we should uh, continue. So, well, we should first, in the first place, we should go back. We, we didn't stop, we didn't finish yet this uh, previous line, this previous example. So, let me just come back to, to Korobov's example. So, basically, what he did here, he built up pressure on the g file. Uh, he didn't hurry to take because he knew that if he takes, he will give black some counterplay. They get the square for their knights and so on. So he played rook g3 and then calmly he built up an attack on the g file. And he waited with taking. Now he waited with taking until it was completely necessary, until he had all his pieces in the right uh, places. So basically what I would like to highlight here is also that you can see that white has space for three pieces now behind the pawn. But black has all the space for two pieces. Maybe some of you have seen this uh, famous, uh, should I show that also? The Karpo Wunziker example. I think many of you know about that in the, in the Rai Lopez, right? In the Rai Lopez. It's, it's a really famous one. Uh, yeah, if you haven't seen it, we will just make a very, very fast visit to this example. Uh, I feel morally obliged to show you this one. If some of you haven't seen it, uh, it goes like this. Yeah, exactly. That one, that one. So anyone, what should white play here? Who, who found this, by the way? L, for example. Yeah, you're right. Okay, please go ahead, L. Show us. You will have the move here. What did uh, Anatoly Karpo play at this point? Bishop a7. If you haven't seen it, this is a good moment to learn something about basic strategy. Aha. What was his plan after that, L? I mean, you, you can't remember all the moves here, but basically what did Karpo do here? Exactly. Bishop uh, c2, then he put his pieces like that. Uh, he brought all the pieces to the A file. Uh, I can do this quickly. Yeah, something like that. Some maneuvering. But later on, when he felt that he was about to win the game, he retreated the bishop. Well, you see how he's taking his time. Interesting. Now the queen is ready to join the party. 
And now, let's see. Oh, he never retreated the bishop. Oh, sorry, I was wrong then. I was wrong. I thought he had retreated the bishop. He actually left it there the whole time. Interesting. Yeah, that's a nice example in any case. So no trades and uh, asking a draw or something like that. No, not at all. Bishop a7 because white has like more space to, to build up something on the a file. Uh, my favorite example, I mean, this one is very nice, but my favorite example is is another one that I have in my in my strategy book, by the way. This is my favorite. Uh, I call this Petrosian's uh, method. So Petrosian had this position. So anyone, blacks, best move. Yeah, you shouldn't take, of course. <laughs> you decide when to take. Black is like the master here. Uh, you can play b5. Yeah, that's a good move also. I think knight c3 and there were some tactical possibilities like that. I don't remember this completely. Uh, yeah, you're right. Two, 206, you got it. Please go ahead. Uh, where is 206? Here, please go ahead. Show us what did the great Petrosian play at this point. Rook a6. He simply doubled the rooks before uh, taking. Uh, on b4. So he first wanted to have the pieces in the right places. Yeah, you can continue if you like, uh, 206. Aha. And only now, when he had this on the right uh, place, now he actually opened up the game. There were several ways to, to get an advantage. That was one of them. Aha. <laughs> and now you win a pawn here, I think, for starters. Aha. This was a tricky tactic. Knight b3, exactly. Anyone? Cheap tactics? Cheap tactics with black. Funny tactic, I would say. Well, not so funny for white, of course, but uh, for black. Yeah, we want to take here, but not now. Exactly, L, knight, bc5. Interesting. So something like that, and you can see that you actually get back the material here very, very soon, thanks to this small tactic. But okay, that's a tactical nuance. What I wanted to show you is that you're not, you don't have any reason to trade quickly. You can play, play like that first and then bring in the rook game. It can also happen on the on the D file. It can happen on any file, right? It's it's a it's a very common uh, it's a very common motive. Uh, I remember one. Maybe I could show you just one last example on this, and then we should get back to the to, to what we were looking at. Uh, there was this other example also. Let's see if I if I remember it. Um, well, or maybe I I won't. No, I I couldn't find it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe on some other occasion we can look at it. So, all right. Let's get going. We understood this perfectly and we should now continue. So let's take our next example. Thinking in both directions. You will definitely need to think in both directions to find White's best continuation in the next one. This is a game that was played very recently in Spain. You're playing with the white pieces. Uh, experienced Grandmaster Korneev with the white pieces. He found an interesting option here. Let's see if you can find it also. Um, yeah, I think that's enough. All right, you get one minute. How did the grandmaster continue here? Take your time, take your time, guys. A nice strategical move by Titan Chess. I think if you play that, maybe Bishop A6. Warning for all of you, warning. Careful about Bishop A6 now. I can play this sometimes, so not every move will do here. This is about, about the link between tactics and strategy, all right? I like that move, bishop d4. Interesting. Yeah, I guess I'll take on d4 and I'm ho I hope I'm okay there in that position. But interesting. Interesting idea. All right. Bishop takes d4. Oh, who, who, somebody was very close here. RKDK and Kiro Tori, you were very close. Yeah, all right, uh, Kiri, Kiro Tori, you can, you can show us then. Let's see, Kiro Tori, how do you continue here? Aha, uh, I, I think that's, um, that's a wrong move order, right? Uh, so please uh, refine your move order, okay, Kiro? No, nothing is wrong with Queen E1. It's just that there is a nicer uh, move there, I think. Uh, 
or did we miss something here? I can also ask, yeah, no problem. I can ask RKDK, who was also extremely close. So please go ahead, uh, RKDK. Show us Bishop takes e5. At first sight, looks like a blunder because they can take with a knight and suddenly they're hitting the knight on f5. But this is the move that Corneille have noticed, e5. Very nice. You could say like tactics and strategy together. This means that now if black, uh, black cannot take, of course, then the rook is hanging. And at the same time, if rook takes d1, we can take back and we keep some kind of back rank motive going on here, right? Uh, please go ahead, uh, RKDK. Which rook should take on d1? What do you think? Yeah, and there is a concrete reason. If you take with the other rook, I can later on give back material, right? I could play something like this and I can get back uh, the exchange. But if you take in this way instead... Uh, it's different now because now I don't have that option. Yeah, if I try to keep on co covering the d8 square, uh, white's next move is not difficult to see. Aha, f exactly. h4 or f4. I would play h4 by logics. No, I like to keep the pawn like protecting, but it's okay f4 also, I think. Aha. Uh, so that's what happened in the game. I think he played h4 in the game and black took like that and white went on to win this game. I think they played something like that and they created a pass play. So, yeah, but usually I would say h4 is nicer. If, if you have a choice, I think this one is, it's always nice to, to gain some space and so on. But okay, never mind. So basically what we have here is we have some kind of, Pet, uh, not Petrov, Berlin battle, right? Berlin battle. And um, white, uh, is, white is probably slightly better. Some of you were saying queen e1. Um, yeah, what about bishop a6? Uh, somebody was talking about this, right? Uh, Titan chess, maybe. What was your opinion about this uh, title? What you were going to play queen g3? No, I don't think so. Not clear exactly what to do about this uh, pressure now. Unpleasant, I think. For uh, why not queen g3? I don't know. I, I can't see the tactic. Sorry, I, I don't see the tactic. If, if I take on c4, what's what's going on? But it's Ill illegal, right? I'm, your bishop is pinned, so you can't play bishop g5 here. I'm afraid. So yeah. Uh, not clear what happens here. Some people are saying bishop d4. I guess in that case I'll have to take it. I guess you can play something like that. But uh, still, I think black is solid in this position. Maybe even something like this. And I'm, I'm starting to create some, some counterplay against your pieces. Aha. So, yeah. Not clear what's going on here. But what he played was very nice. Bishop takes e5. So, anyone, what do you think is black's best move here? Aha, we should take with the pawn instead. So interestingly, the computer was not giving white a big advantage here, but I'm convinced that white is having a pleasant uh, advantage uh, uh, due to these funny pawns, right? But uh, yeah, the computer likes the Berlin Royal Opus very much. So I'm not surprised that it likes this also. But uh, yeah, white should be a little better here in any case. Maybe put a knight. One of these two knights will have to move here, I think. I, I don't know exactly which one. Maybe this knight, and, and then we can put our queen. There maybe and white should be a little better. So nice. Bishop takes e5. Please notice this small tactic, guys. Corneille, experienced grandmaster, he definitely noticed that there was some kind of backrank motive that we could uh, take advantage of here. Okay, let's uh, continue. Let's see our next example, which I think is also from Spain. Uh, yeah, this is a game between with white pieces uh, Pepe Cuenca and playing black is Garcia Martin. Uh, at this point, uh, black had a very interesting uh, possibility here. I will quiz you on this one. Let's see. I don't think it's go going, going to be very difficult for you. But uh, okay, uh, here we go. Yeah, funny tactic, uh, quirky and little chess player. I think I can take and I can play king f1, right? Or no? Uh, we, okay, we will talk about that. We'll talk about that. But nice, nice discovery. Nice discovery. Aha. Uh -huh. Very nice discovery. Oh, everybody wants to play like that. You're very tactical. <laughs> everybody walks in the footsteps of... Uh, who, was, who was the first one here? Yeah, I don't remember anymore. But most of you want to play like Captain Al and Wyatt and Santos and GM and so on. Nobody played in, in the right way. Charles and Rohan, you're, Rohan is very, very close. 
So Rohan, basically you got it. Just a little uh, adjustment and uh, and yeah, you found it. Ah, uh, who, who misclicked? Requish. Yeah, okay, I will request. I will tell you that closest here was Brian, Daniel, Hollow Blade, Titan Chess, Yugoslavian. Uh, you were the closest. All right, so something's going on here. By the way, guys, if you've said 93, I mean, congratulations, that's a very pretty tactic that you have found. But I think I can escape here by Queen takes and King F1. Yeah, you're unfortunate that. You don't, you can't profit from this hanging rook or something because you have to pick up my queen also, right? Yeah, we will uh, request. We will request. All right. Uh, yeah, very tragic that they have king f1. Okay, we will do this again. Uh, let's see if you can find this. They say retreating moves are difficult. Maybe at some point you have a retreating move. Here we go. Second and last quiz. Okay, Rohan, Charles, you got it. Congratulations. Smart Goldfish, another winner. Great work. Uh -huh. Okay, a lot of winners. Connor, Wyatt, uh, Yugoslavian, Ryan. Uh, but Rohan was fastest. Yeah, I remember that. Rohan was fastest. And a lot of people wanted to play knight f6 on move 3. Knight f6 on move 3. You're hitting my knight, but I can play queen. Yeah, what can I play though? Queen f3. But then you have queen d3, right? Yeah, what can I play there? I, I don't have a clue. Queen takes b7, I guess I play there. Yeah, queen takes b7 is my move, I guess. Okay, we will talk about that. Maybe I'm missing something. That's highly possible. I think I have like knight f4 in some line also, which might help me. So, okay, please go ahead, uh, Rohan, show us, please. Show us how can... Uh, the quiz is done, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, so, well, what happened with the quiz? I will refresh, all right? Okay, let's see uh, if I bring up this again. Uh, one moment, please. Uh, this is the one, right? Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, who was uh, uh, who was the fastest one, by the way? Who was the fastest one? Rohan, I think. How can I find uh, Rohan here? Uh, wow, so so many people around, uh, and I cannot find. Uh, very tricky. I wish I had some kind of list. To see the names uh, yeah uh, but i can't find rohan in the list it's very hard you have so many different uh, images and they're moving all the time yeah here i found rohan i thought i found rohan somewhere yeah here is rohan so please go ahead rohan show us how does black continue here first move is very important we should force white's queen to take the pawn or any, anyone else uh, knows it uh, still waiting for Rohan to turn up, but uh, I can't see Rohan. Wow. Okay, I'll quiz you again because I, I don't get any contact from uh, uh, from uh, Rohan. So we will do this again. Yeah, let's do this very quickly. Uh, very, very, very quickly. Uh, you get only 25 seconds, okay? Okay. <clears throat> nice. Smart tactic. Somehow we have to find the right move order here. Uh, now I think most of you found this excellent work. Uh -huh. Excellent work. So a lot of people got it right. Uh, yeah, I, I reloaded the page. Yeah, I had to reload the page. So I'll ask somebody here. Legendary Goat, please go ahead. Legendary, how do you continue here? These knights are a little shaky. How can we fight against them? Bishop e5, that's what white uh, black should have played in the game. If queen, 
Queen takes at once, it's not so good. Yeah, because it's hanging on uh, on e2, I think. I would take on... Yeah, how would I take, by the way? I would take like like that, I think, right? And if rook takes, we could take on e2, and the rook is still defending uh, the knight. And if knight takes, I think there is some other tactic, right? Bishop c6, and something's going to happen on this side. Exactly. So, yeah. I have to play first. Rook takes c8. Yeah, black does not want to take because the rook is hanging. So we take back. And when white takes, they have some kind of funny tactic, but we have bishop c6, and I think it's game over already. Nice. Now, if you said, yeah, I hope everybody understands. No matter where the queen goes, uh, it's a mate coming up, right? So it's safe to say it's over here. Uh, some of you wanted to play something else here. Yeah, what were you saying here? Um, yeah, what did you what did you say here? If anyone remembers, what was the other move that that you wanted to play? Um, knight f6. Yeah, exactly. Knight f6. So if you go knight f6, I think I have queen takes b7. In this way, I not so much for the pawn, but I want to hit the the rook. And if you go rook c2, I think I have knight f4, so that I save this knight and also the other knight. So yeah, I think that's the reason why we should prefer to play like like you're saying here. Bishop e5, very clever move. We're like forcing the queen to take the pawn so that it's later on exposed to bishop c6. In the game, unfortunately, Garcia Martin played instead uh, rook takes, rook takes, and bishop e5. This looked very tempting. Now, this looks very tempting so that if queen takes, bishop takes. But what do you think uh, white should play here? Okay, we will make a quiz from this also. Let's have a little quiz just for fun, just to see who is... Who is awake and who is not? You get only 35 seconds for this. Aha, great work by L. You got it. Exactly. No, you can't take on d5, I think. In that case, I just take on e2. You can't really do that. Aha, L, Yugoslavia, and Kiro Tori, Titan Chess, Skill Saber. JM Chess, Gordon, Hollow Blade, you all got it. Yeah, smart tactics there to save our skin. Aha. Uh, that's definitely what we have to play here. Oski, you also got it. Please go ahead, uh, Oski Chess, show us how would you continue here. Aha. Queen C2, clever move. If I take like that, you can take. And oh, you have a good point there. Uh, exactly, Titan. Bishop F3, tricky move. Aha. Uh -huh. But white is just uh, right in time to play knight g3 and avoiding the mate. So that's what happened in the game, I think. But if we play it in the other way, if we, instead of taking, if we start with bishop e5, it somehow favors us. Yeah, this was definitely 100% tactics. Yeah, excellent. So I think uh, I'll show you another one instead. Let's take something uh, from, um, let's see here if I can figure it out. Okay, you're playing with the black pieces. Try to find black's best uh, course of action in this position. I don't think it's very difficult. You get one minute for this mission, all right? Is this tactics or is it strategy? I won't tell you. You'll have to figure it out yourself. Um, Sicilian and Alapin battle in the game between Aguirre with white and Valenzuela with the black pieces. L, you got it. Great work. L finds all the right uh, solutions. Yeah, nice. Don't forget, guys, you get one hint here. Don't forget that white is sitting with IQP. Yeah, if our opponent, if our opponent is sitting with the IQP, what might that mean? Okay, RKDK, you found it also. Gordon, good work. You found it as well. If we are fighting against the IQP, what should you remember in that case? Al Morris, congratulations. That's the right approach here. Legendary Goat, we have another winner. Okay, so please go ahead, uh, Gordon. You can show us how should Black continue here. When our opponent has the IQP, we are happy to trade pieces. 
that's exactly what happens in this. Uh, yeah, you cannot take this pawn. Yeah, for sure. My queen is there. Knight c3, you can see black has managed to trade off a few pieces. What I think is interesting in this position is that if you look here at this position, you would say that from white's uh, minor pieces, you would say that these two are the most passive ones. And even so, black is happy to trade them off. But somehow it helps their play also, right? Yeah, this one is not hanging, by the way. I have enough defense on this side with black. So uh, don't look so much at what leaves. Look at what stays, please. This is actually a very clever way of playing. Like uh, Gordon is explaining, knight c3. We're forcing another trade. Suddenly white's position is a little shaky. The pawn on h3 is, is hanging. Uh, so it's not really tactics. No, this is more like strategy, you could say. This, uh, this one. He played in the game queen, queen b4. Hitting the rook. I think if you play like this, maybe the rook gets... Uh, does it get trapped there, maybe? Something like king... Oh, no, there is a cheap tactic, right? Anyone? Cheap tactic? 97, exactly. Yeah, thanks. 97 with a nasty double threat. So, uh, black simply played queen c7. Good move. Now we're ready for more trades also. White played king g2, bishop e7, queen b2, rook b3, queen c1, rook c8, queen e1, queen c3. That's how the game went. Black had a very nice uh, endgame advantage and they went on to win this game. Um, so interesting, no, interesting trade, no, trading pieces when your opponent has the IQP, that makes perfect sense. What else uh, did you say here? Now, A6, some people were saying, yeah, interesting move, A6. I guess I should take this at some point. I should take this one because it's, it's an annoying piece. Um, now I'm covering this square. I don't know. Can I maybe take, take here also? And, uh, yeah, or maybe I should play something like Rook. I don't know. Can I play Rook B2 perhaps? Black is fine here still. Black has a decent position, though. But uh, I think this is the right way to play with white, to, to add some extra pressure here. So, yeah, or they, or maybe you can take, uh, says uh, uh, Titan, we can take and maybe this is a weak, weak pawn in the, in the end game or something. Yeah, possible. But what he played in the game, I think it's nicer. Yeah, it's nicer because it also helps us to, to invade along the, the C file, which is pleasant for, for black, of course. All right, we'll take the next one. Let's uh, have a look at the game by um, Artemiev with the white pieces versus Van Forest. You have this position, um, and I would like to know how you should continue here with the white pieces, all right? Please notice that move orders are very, very important in this example. Uh, let's see if I can get it right. Something like that and something like this. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, guys, you get one minute. 15. Aha. Uh -huh. So, why to play? Try to find a nice way to continue here with white pieces. Um, think in both directions, please. Tactics and strategy. Try to think in both ways at the same time. RKDK, congratulations. We have a winner here. Um, very nice usage of the minor pieces. Yeah, this is a position where the minor pieces are very important for sure. If you play knight e6 on move 2, uh, yeah, what does that mean? It means I have to take on d2 first, right? I'll take on d2. You take back and I take on e6 and I trade off the pieces. That's what many of you want to play, but uh, I don't think it's the right approach here, 100%. Okay, so let's see what else. Knight takes f5. Can you really play that? I think I go rook takes d2 in that case. And then I take on f5. You'll correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Yugoslavia Berserk are very, very close. Yeah, I understand. I can probably take on c6. Uh, no, I can take on d2, Yugoslavian. Okay, so we have four winners here. RKDK, Legendary Goat, Daniel Best, and GM. Please go ahead, Daniel. Show us, please, how should white continue here? If you play your cards in the right way, you will actually win a pawn here. But I would say it's a little connected to strategy also, because by trading, we help our bishop to a better post. You can see now, now that white's bishop is in a really nice place. Some kind of even mating uh, ideas come up here. King h8 was played in the game. We have to move away the king, I think. Uh -huh. If we play instead uh, king uh, g7, how to win a pawn? Yeah, we will come to that, uh, Pop Fisher. We will come to that. 
So if I go King G7, uh, what would be the difference here? Can you spot the chip tactic, uh, Daniel? Exactly. We take and we actually get an extra exchange this time. Yeah, this this one is hanging, so you should probably. I, I don't think you should play that, Daniel. Though I get two pieces for the rook though. So if you improve your move order, uh, it wins the exchange. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We end up the exchange up here after rook takes. Exactly. Yeah, with a clear clear win, obviously. Aha. Exactly. Yeah, good point. So nice, nice, uh, Daniel. Nice work. So I will have to go with the king here instead. And now came the difficult move. There is a topic I call it: Who needs the square? Who needs? Who needs the square? And it, it basically means that you would like to go to a square to, to a to, to a square with a specific piece, but first you have to trade on that square. If you see what I mean, that's what's going on here, right? Bishop e6. If you play knight e6 instead, I think I have the chance to take. Yes, yeah, some of you were saying this, right? We have a big group of students who were saying this: Tiger, Sachi, Osamu, and Kang, King, Sam, John, Sam, Connor, Kwoki, two hundred. Yeah, many people wanted to play like this, but I think I'm okay here, right? Or, or or correct me if I'm wrong. I think I'm surviving in this ending. Yeah, I'll play rook uh, d8 very soon here. King, can I bring in the king maybe? And king f6. I think I'm 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 alive here. No, I'm alive here with black in this ending. But if we play like Daniel is saying, it's much smarter because the piece that would like to end up on e6 is the knight. So please go ahead again, Daniel. What did you play here? Exactly, bishop e6. That's a pretty move. No, that uh, Artemiev of course found in the game. Now he wants to plant a knight on e6. A black cannot really avoid this in any good way. Uh, in the game they played here, bishop uh, e5. I guess the critical variation here was... Yeah, bishop takes d4 is certainly not a good idea, as you can see. Now we have the mating pattern that we talked about. So, yeah, what can you play here? Rook takes d4 is another move that you could consider. Uh, but bishop takes, rook takes, bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes. And I think here we win the pawn, right? Rook check and king d7, bishop e6. Yeah, long variation, but uh, that's how it works, right? You end up winning a pawn on the um, on the queen side, right? In in this variation, while in the game, uh, Van Forest played Bishop E5 instead, and uh, yeah, what did you play here? Uh, please go ahead. Exactly, that's right. Uh, we are sticking to our idea here with Daniel. We want to install the knight. Uh, on the very nice e6 square, exactly, 96. So I hope everybody understands now what we're talking about. We are able to win a pawn here. That's what happened in the game. Black played rook g8 and white simply cashed in. They took the pawn here. Yeah, nice, nice. Should should I maybe re... Uh, I think we should request this one, right? I just want to make sure that everybody got it right. So let's, uh, let's request... Just for fun, just to make sure that everybody's paying attention and so on. Let's see if you can get this right. Uh, yeah, all right. This will be a little challenge for you, but I'm sure that you can make it. Okay, you get for this mission uh, 30 seconds. I'm sorry, Kiro Tori, that's too fast. You have to play that a little later. Uh, Wyatt, if you play like that, I can take on e6, right? Bishop takes e6. 206, congratulations. We have a first winner here. 206, you got it. Excellent work. Uh, Almoris, second place. Very nice. What happened, Sarthak? You're out of time. Oh, Rook takes d4. Then I go, I take on e6 there, right? Uh, RKDK and Titan and Sarthak. Uh, what do you want to play there? Rook, rook d6, maybe. But I don't think you have a big advantage. Aha. Anyway, yeah. Uh, 206, please go ahead. Show us how to continue here. Who needs the square? Aha. We want to plant a knight on e6. So the bishop will have to help us with that. Bishop e6, very clever move. We are about to put a knight on e6. If they play like that, this was my question here. But uh, 206 played their cards correctly. Don't take on d4, please. I can then take back. Also, please don't take with a rook. I won't make any favors here. Don't even think about it. I will take like that instead, right? So, yeah, you have to play. Uh, bishop takes and I take back. Please go ahead, uh, 206. Uh -huh. And we end up in a very good endgame because we have this one coming up. But also we have that one. 
which is uh, being attacked. So now, unfortunately, the rook cannot really look after both of them. So nice.